Hello, this is Trevor from Telecom Training and today we're going to be talking about VDSL lines and how VDSL modems work to get internet access to our homes and businesses. The process used by modems to accomplish this task is called modulation and demodulation. The name modem was developed from the words modulation and demodulation. The M in modem is for modulation and the D is for demodulation. Now I'm going to use this diagram here to explain to you exactly how the VDSL line actually work. Now this VDSL line runs on a frequency between 25 kilohertz and 12 megahertz. Now the speed is 52 megabits per second down by 3 megabits per second up. Now this is called an asynchronous type line. Now if it was synchronous you'll have 52 megabits per second down and 52 megabits per second up. Now we're going to be using a modulation process called DMT. This stands for discrete multitone modulation. Now the way this all works is that you're getting 52 megabits per second of digital data coming from your internet and going into your DSLAM. Now the interface that on the DSLAM that connects to the internet is a router interface. So the router part of the DSLAM receives your digital data from the internet and it sends it off to the modem area of the DSLAM and it is converted at that time to analog. So now you have 52 megabits per second of analog data. And now you have to get your analog data across your pair of twisted pair wires which connects from the ISP all the way to the modem at the subscriber's premises. Now in order to do that, we need a frequency to do that. To be precise, we need a frequency of 12 megahertz. Now this 12 megahertz being sent from your modem to the line is being divided up into 4 kilohertz channels all the way from 0 hertz all the way up to 12 megahertz. Now the very first channel here between 0 hertz and 4 kilohertz is being used for the phone. Um, this is not a voice over IP phone. This is plain old telephone service which is called a POTS line which is used in the very first 4 kilohertz. And then there's a space between 4 kilohertz and 25 kilohertz. This separation between the phone and the VDSL line is used to prevent interference between the two. Now from 25 kilohertz right up to 12 megahertz is being used for your VDSL service. Now from 25 kilohertz to 12 megahertz you have 4 kilohertz channels and in each one of these 4 kilohertz channels will be placed 56 kilobits of analog data and this 4 kilohertz frequency would be used as the carrier for this data from the modem at the ISP's end all the way to the modem at the subscriber's end. This is what we call modulation. Your data has been modulated onto these 4 kilohertz channels and sent to the modem at the subscriber's end. So once this modem at your subscriber's end here receives the data, it looks at each and every one of these 4 kilohertz channels and it removes the 56 kilobits of analog data. And it would add all of this data together and place it into a section here for the total amount of data which would add up to 52 megabits of data as we sent originally from here. And this process is called demodulation. And then this analog data will be converted back to a digital format to be sent off to your router to supply internet data to your local area network where your computers and all your wireless equipment and so on will be. And the process from the router back to the internet is just reverse. 
Now there's one more thing I want to show you. I've taken all of the channels. You remember these channels here? These are the four kilohertz channels. And I flip them around from a horizontal direction to a vertical direction. Showing you exactly what happens between the modem at the ISP's end and the subscriber's end. Uh, just bear with me for a second and this will become clear. This is also very important for you, for you to understand as well. Now what I have here is a graph. Okay. Now all of your uh, 4 kilohertz channels are right here going all the way from 25 kilohertz all the way up to 12 megahertz and this side here is the 4 kilohertz section from 0 hertz all the way up to 4 kilohertz and at the top here it is you see 56 kilobits of data that means that you have 56 kilobits of data filling up all of these 4 kilohertz channels all the way from 25 kilohertz all the way up to 12 megahertz okay and at the top here i just show you that I'm talking about the D slam here. This is what the modem there is doing. It is filling up all of these uh, four kilohertz channels with 56 kilobits of data to be sent to the subscriber's end. So this modem here is at the subscriber's end 600 meters away. But this bar graph here is representing what is going on right now with the modem at the ISP's end. Now at the subscriber's end, this is the same bar graph that you, but you'll notice here that there's a slope down from where it was originally, everything was right across like this. Here we have a slope downwards. What this represents is that as the frequency gets higher, right to the end here, which is 12 megahertz, you'll notice that we're not getting as much data in. You were supposed to have uh, 56 kilobits of digital data in each one of these channels but the highest frequency which is 12 megahertz for these 4 kilohertz channels are, have been reduced and I wanted to show you this because the reason why this is reduced is because of noise between the modem at the ISP's end and the modem at the subscriber's end there's a twisted pair and this twisted pair would experience noise this noise could be coming from other cable pairs within that cable like there could be about a hundred pairs within that cable and there could be other DSL lines or voice lines or whatever and that would cause crosstalk and crosstalk would induce an electromagnetic field into your line and that causes noise and the higher frequencies are the, the ones that are most affected so here we have the higher frequencies not carrying as much data because of the noise and they've been reduced substantially where there's hardly any data in these channels but as the frequencies get lower you'll notice that we're getting more bandwidth on these four kilohertz channels so you can have more data in them so as the frequencies get lower here you have more data being placed in these channels here you have 56 kilobits of data being placed in the first one but as the frequencies get higher the bandwidth become less and this is what happens with just about every DSL line so here we got 52 megabits per second being sent but we only receiving 40 megabits per second at the modem at the subscribers end so this is exactly what happened with just about every DSL line customer may be purchasing 52 megabits of data and they may have done a speed test and they would find that hey I'm only getting 40 megabits per second of uh, data and so they will call the ISP up and say well how come I'm only getting this ISP will send a tech out and check the line out and realize that there isn't much they can do because um, of this loss on the line so generally ISPs promise 52 megabits per second of digital data but they do not guarantee that you're going to get that um, if you look at the fine print they always just promise that you'll get this but 
they know that by the time that data get to your premises, it will be something less than 52 megabits of data. They try to do the best they can to get you this, but in reality, uh, they know that it will be something less because of noise on the line between the ISP and the subscriber's location. If this video has been helpful to you and you would like to see more videos like this one, please don't forget to click on the like button and also click on the subscribe button so that you'll be alerted as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.